Hey, Fitlandians, welcome to today's show where we are talking about the dietary strategies that are out there and how any of them can be unhealthy. Today, I have Alex Cunningham, who is the head of partnerships for Perfect Keto. Alex, welcome to today's show. Thank you so much. I'm stoked to be on your show. <laughs> so we were just chatting a little bit about our shared roots in San Francisco. So I have to give a shout out to all my people back in the Bay Area. And so t tell us a little bit about Perfect Keto, where you're located, and how you got started with them. Absolutely. So um, we're in San Francisco, right in the Mission District. If you're familiar, it's kind of like the sunny part of town. But right now it's ice cold and foggy, maybe that's kind of the more uh, uh, familiar setting. But the way the way it started was actually just in coffee shops uh, in San Francisco. And I was hanging out with uh, Dr. Anthony Gustin and Justin Mares, and they both had their own health companies. And they were both kind of gravitating from a paleo kind of uh, whole food type, type of eating to the ketogenic type of eating where you're eating almost zero carbs. And we were looking for, you know, exogenous ketones that we could use and kind of help increase our ketone levels. You know, we're always tinkering and it was just, it was just kind of an awful marketplace. And so that's kind of where it all sprang from. Awesome. So when you say it was an awful marketplace, like you really wanted to come together and create a product that served your needs, but was also a really high quality product. Absolutely. I mean, it was pretty, pretty selfish. Like we really just wanted to take it ourselves. And the supplement in industry is is kind of a mess, you know. So, yes. Um, and with the ketone supplement niche, it's uh, it's no different. Like um, exogenous ketones taste really, really bad when they're just raw. And so everything that we were trying either tasted horrible, um, like literally unpalatable, or it tasted great, but it was because you know the companies were adding all this junk and just like stuff that is just so horrible for your body. And, uh, and they're also charging an outrageous price. So we said, hey, uh, we can definitely make this taste good with clean ingredients and come in at a lower price. And so we should definitely do it. Yeah, I love that. So let's talk. Well, I want to I want to dig in a little more about how you first came to connect with Dr. Anthony Gustin. How did you learn about him and how did it affect your own health journey? Absolutely. It was, it was kind of a long and windy road. And like we were saying before, like, I feel like everybody that is in the health industry kind of has a, uh, a place where they're at a health bottom in their life and just like extremely unhealthy. But then that is kind of their foundation for having the dedication to um, be healthy and, you know, having kind of this craving for, for health knowledge and to just keep improving. And so for me, that was when I was about 23. I was just ex like, it was not a pretty picture. Um, and I, but that's when I got into like CrossFit and kind of learning about it, the paleo style of eating. And that's when I met uh, Dr. Anthony Gustin. I was actually just reading his blog at the time, and it was called the Paleo Fix. And it was phenomenal because it was not like you know the men's fitness or the sensational magazines that tell you how to one simple trick to lose a hundred pounds. You know what I mean? Like right. he was basically just telling you how to eat real foods that grow and 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 decay and stuff like that. And he taught me how to use a skillet. Um, and start making my own food, and, and I was like, wow, I feel really good. Thanks, Doc. And so um, that's kind of where it started, and you know, from there, we, we would work out together occasionally, and he um, started a whole food supplement company at first, and he was uh, uh, you know, distributing it to his patients. He has a, a, a couple of chiropractic clinics uh, in San Francisco, and it started to pick up because you know they were really great products. They were clean. There was no emulsifiers, nothing inflammatory. It tasted great. And when I tried it, I was like, "Doc, you gotta let me help." <laughs> he, he didn't need my help at all. But uh, <laughs> but that's kind of how it started. And and then you know we both progressed from being low carb to wanting to try this keto thing where you go almost zero carb. And uh, and then that's kind of how the the perfect keto supplement company started because there is the same problem with the, the keto supplement industry is just a whole lot of garbage out there and we wanted some good stuff for ourselves. You know? Yeah, I love it. And it's so interesting because, you know, I think a lot of us, a lot of us that get into the fitness industry and the wellness industry, you know, we've had our own personal journey. I talk a lot about how 
I was working out six hours a week and I wasn't losing a pound because I had no clue how to nourish my body or my mind at the time. And so through through my journey of losing 50 pounds and maintaining it, um, that inspired me, right? We want to get this information out there. So it's it's really um, inspiring whenever I get to connect with someone else who's had their health journey and now is doing something to get that out to the world. Because one thing I'm really passionate about, and I'm sure you guys would agree with us, not only is the supplement industry really, really dicey, but also all of the, the, the drug industry, all of the pharmaceuticals. Um, and I'm sure, I'm sure you guys are just as passionate about really preventing disease with eating a whole foods diet. Absolutely. And I mean, that's what I admire so much about Philandy is that it, 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 you teach like kind of the, the mechanics of, of eating a healthy diet, but then also that, you know, it's all about the thinking behind it and being able to have some mindfulness and say, oh, this is me feeling uncomfortable and wanting to eat, uh, you know, <laughs> to feel comfortable. And, and it's like, oh, I, I don't have to do that. Or, I don't yeah. know, just, because that's where the rubber meets the road is, is okay. Yeah. I always say to people, I'm like, how, how would you like it if you actually craved a run or a workout versus a glass of wine. And they always say, yeah, right. And I'm like, do some mind zoning for a week. It'll blow your mind. So I, I like to share the story too, that um, it comes in celebration too, not just stress. I mean, we mourn with food, we celebrate with food uh, and, and booze too. I talk a lot about booze because that's been my own, like, that's my go-to. For some people it's potato chips, for me it's, it's wine. So I talk about that a lot. But I remember when I finished my book, um, and, and this is now uh, three months ago that I finished the book, and man, it was like celebration central, right? Let's pop the mm -hmm. champagne, <laughs> let's have some fun. Yeah. But it's really interesting. I didn't shame myself, but I, I was aware that that could take me back into another craving cycle. So I think that's, that's kind of a message that I'd like to weave in too is, when you start engaging the power of your mind, you can release the shame and guilt and frustration around living a healthy lifestyle because now you know you can intellectualize what's happening in your body and you can consciously now make a different choice. Um, so one of the things that I started doing is I was like, huh, I'm, I'm, it's two weeks later and I'm still celebrating. So I just gave myself a little mind zoning mantra and I just said, it's easy for me to be sober. And I just told myself that it's easy for me to be sober. It's easy for me to be sober. And I kid you not, like two weeks later, I said to my husband, I was like, hey, do you want to do six months sober starting in the beginning of the year? Let's harness the power of that energy. And he's like, sure. Like, that's the power of the mind. It will follow the blueprint that you give it. So for anyone listening, it's easy for me to eat a whole foods diet. It's easy for me to learn how to cook in a skillet. So yeah. I want to get back to you because I think that's really, um, it's really cute. And I don't mean that in a demeaning way, but it's really cute that he taught you how to cook in a skillet. What, <laughs> what, is, what did that mean for you? Like, were you not cooking before? Did your cookware scare you? Because I it was intimidated by my food processor for a long time. <laughs> totally. I mean, I knew how to order food. Um, I knew how to like buy frozen foods and stuff like that. But then like when I just saw photos of like his food in a skillet and it was just like this tremendous like meat and veggies and it just looked like I, I needed, um, <laughs> I got to check out, check out his site. It, it's pretty great and it's simple. And I, I just tried it for the first time and you can't ruin things with a skillet somehow. Like it just right. cooks it evenly and perfectly. And like, I didn't even feel like I was cooking. I was just like adding ingredients and uh, or like putting food in the skillet and then all of a sudden it's perfect so yeah. oh I love that I think that's um so I, I keep talking about I want to do um a live kind of Facebook on intuitive cooking right we talk about intuitive eating but everyone's like oh I need recipes and it's like no you can just throw vegetables and high quality meats and herbs and you know spices and even some coconut milk, high quality fats, and you can just make the most amazing like casserole skillet scramble, if you will. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I love it. Okay, so let's talk about from your experience and certainly the research that you guys did in creating your products, any dietary strategy that is considered a health strategy 
can be unhealthy. And I, I love talking about this because I'm in a lot of Facebook groups. And whether it's a vegan dietary style, whether it's paleo, whether it's keto, whether it's Mediterranean, man, you can make every single one of those unhealthy. And that's really what caught my eye was the blog post um, that, that Dr. Gustin did about unhealthy keto. So what is unhealthy keto? Oh boy, I've I've done it before. You know, I've I've been there thinking that you know I'm 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 healthy because you know there's ketones in my in my blood and that's just not true. So I mean, it kind of goes back to uh, let me back up a little bit and I, I'd like to say that like you know we're a supplement company, but we really try to use it as a platform to say, hey, just keep the supplements supplementary and and eat a whole food, real food diet, and that's 98% of it. And then the little piece of the puzzle is maybe, you know, you add a little supplement to, um, uh, as a tool. That type of that. And it, I mean, people, because people tend to think that like, oh, if I'm taking this supplement, this, this exogenous ketone supplement, then I'm keto and I'm healthy. And it's just certainly not the case. And uh, what we see a lot of, and I feel like is not being talked about enough, is that um, just because you know you might be eating under 30 grams of carbs a day and um, in a state of ketosis, that does not mean that uh, it's a healthy diet. You know what the macronutrients might be there, but right. the quality of your health depends on the quality of your micronutrients, which all still comes from um, you know things that grow and, and decay and, and are real foods. And so um, people have quite a misconception. I, I don't want to just like make broad sweeping statements, but when you think keto sometimes you think Atkins and you think this like greasy cheeseburger with with no bun and stuff like that and I mean I've I've eaten that before but like you know really you still got to have the the leafy green vegetables and um, the high quality meats I love the phrase uh, that you know you are what you eat but you're also you are what you eat eats so yeah. you need to source the right type of um, um, meat and yes. Um, eggs and, and chicken and stuff like that and it just makes the world a difference to uh, you know go that extra mile. I, I love that. So what are some examples of some unhealthy keto that you've seen out there? Sure. <laughs> sure. I, I think it, I see it uh, you know in the snacks you know you know reaching for processed cheese you know dipped in butter or like it's just like <laughs> And the, the funny thing is, like, I feel bad saying these things because I've I've been there. Like, I've been I've been the the kid, you know, crushing you know, <laughs> cheese and butter and like thinking that I was Mr. Keto, but um, you know, that's it's just not doing doing you any favors. Right. I I totally get that. I mean, the the things that I see in the groups a lot. And again, this isn't shaming anyone. This is just really the intention of this podcast is to bring to light these nutrients that you do need from real food that hasn't gone through incredible processing um, with chemicals and fillers added to it that mess with your hormones. They create addictive cycles. I mean, there's a lot of information if people just Googled um, what's going on there. But the more that a food is processed, the more we aren't adapted to process it ourselves. So it starts messing with our bodily functions. And I, man, I've, I've seen the cheese on everything. Cheese on everything. And it's, it's getting a variety of quality fats like raw, unrefined, organic coconut oil, for example, or grass-fed butter um, that has more nutrients in it. Mm -hmm. uh, talking about those high-quality meats and not just you know, grabbing whatever kind of manufacturer conventional hamburgers out there and thinking that that's going to serve your body well. And then back to what you were saying about you kind of like your mental outlook towards getting healthy. Like I, I know for me, I've uh, kind of had an unhealthy approach to getting healthy and also had the healthy approach to getting healthy. And I feel like when I'm in that unhealthy approach to getting healthy, I'm, I'm so um, concentrated in on, you know, what my ketone levels are yeah. or, um, you know, what the scale says and stuff like that. And it's almost like a neurotic, like it's just an unhealthy, like approach to getting healthy. And, um, it's really kind of relieving, like you said, like when you let go of the shame and, and kind of like, you know, all the, the pressure around it and, yes. 
and you know have the mindfulness to like be in touch with like oh am i hungry yes or no like w- what am i hungry for like what's nutritious that i can give my body and and kind of just you know let the results take care of themselves because if the results are not coming out what you want them to be then you can just take a step back and, and pivot and, yeah. and make adjustments and it's not that big of a deal and <laughs> I'm going to totally chime in on that point because a lot of people that might be eating unhealthy, you know, style of keto, we'll we'll just use keto as the example, um, but it happens in all dietary strategies. They might be losing weight, but losing weight is, is not the only kind of result of health, right? You can still be unhealthy and, and lose weight. And so I think what happens is when a lot of people start and, in a ketogenic diet, they're just seeing the weight loss. And to them that equates to health, but it's not. Because there's long term, that's not gonna serve you well. So that's the first thing. But I love too also is focusing on health. And how do we get out of this like programmed cultural size weight loss mentality and really focus on how do we create vitality in our lives? How do we prevent disease? How do we get more energy and focus? And you said something that I just love is becoming more mindful. Like how do we connect what's going on externally with how we feel in our body, Um, emotionally, physically, spiritually, like all of it as a whole person, how are we nourishing ourselves? (laughs) So true because I mean, you get flustered during your day. There's notifications everywhere. There's symptoms everywhere and it's like, you just kind of lose touch with like whether you're actually hungry or not. Yeah, exactly. So I am going to share um, f- share this with your audience too that that will be tuning into this podcast. Is I actually developed what I call a lifestyle planner and journal. It's it's called Strategic Vitality, and so it's very like you know left brain plan your day, do your affirmation, do your gratitude, pick your five targets, but it also does a super easy food journaling exercise where you're just like circling one of the food groups you had you don't have to count macros you don't have to count calories you just have to note that I eat grains that I eat legumes that I eat eggs soy sugar alcohol so you're just circling it but then it also has you check in on your hunger level at that meal like now you're actually taking the time to take a deep breath and check in with your body first like am I hungry okay maybe it's a scale of Maybe it's a three on a scale of one to five, but this is the only time I'm going to get to eat. So I know I need to eat now because that certainly happens. Then it has you check in on your current emotional state, right? Because you just said something that to- that I can totally relate to. I am on my technology from the moment I wake up and it's I'm really working hard. I'll create a mind zoning mantra for myself. It's easy for me to shut off my phone two hours before bed. <laughs> I'll just start creating that for myself Um, because I do struggle with like shutting down and I'm constantly like, oh, there's a notification, right? The sense of urgency, like everything's urgent. That is taking us so far out of our body and keeping us in a constant state of stress, driving up cortisol, you know, all the things that we don't want for, for a healthy life. So it's how do we like slow down throughout the day? Yeah, exactly. Even just talking about it, you and I are, are you can tell we're in our wellness path because we're like, it's time to take a deep breath. We have that little switch. Yep. <laughs> Slow down, take a deep breath. Um, and that's why I, I love doing the mind zoning meditations because it's a way for people to create those healthy patterns, but also take a break from the chaos of the day so that they can focus on their health. So I love that we're talking about other ways to do this. <laughs> I love you said that, you, that you have a journal and just like the process of writing things down because I mean the second you put like that pen to paper and you realize that there's just not that much and it just gets it out of your head, it's like, it's so relieving, you know? Yeah, for sure. I think that's why the planner is so powerful. Like, okay, because we all know, right? If we're super busy, our day gets away from us. So But if we map out a plan, and then we also say, these are the five things I will commit to getting done. This is what's going to keep moving me forward on my journey. And and for for some of us, that's I will get a a walk-in. I will cook my own meals. I will go to the grocery store today. 
because for whatever reason I've been eating out too much. Like that's a priority. But yeah, when we when we cross those things off our list, people don't realize that fires up the pleasure center in the brain. Our brain loves to have these little wins. And so that just keeps that forward motion going, right? We all know we're either moving forward or moving backwards. We are never staying in one spot. So that's a way to keep moving forward. And I love that you even shared like, yeah, we love, you know, get all excited. We can knock a few things, put it down to paper and have those wins. (laughs) So I absolutely love that we're talking about like holistically healthy lifestyles and not just ingredients in the food that we eat. But I do want to come back to talking a little bit about your product and what makes it different. I love that. First of all, I love that you guys say, No, it really is a supplement. It's not meant to be a main source of your nutrients and fuel for your body. Um, That you are promoting a whole foods diet because I think you still can be a supplement company and still promote health and wellness. But talk a little bit about how your ingredients are different. What is in them? Totally. So not a whole lot. Like uh, this is kind of the lineup behind me. And so say, you know, our main kind of categories are one, the exogenous ketones, um, and then the other would be MCTs, which are medium chain tri- triglycerides, and then we have a collagen product. So obviously it has the, the main ingredient, and then uh, we will sweeten it with stevia, and um, maybe if it's a chocolate flavor, we'll use uh, uh, cocoa, and that's pretty much it. That's all, <laughs> that's all you get. And then the other thing is in, in the supplement industry, like they'll include – you know, emulsifiers and flow agents in the processing, and they don't have to include that on the on the label. Like we regulate oh. ourselves the label, and so you know, we actually have to pay our manufacturers more to not include um, emulsifiers and flow agents because then the machines get stickier and they have to clean the machines more often and for time. Um, but then those are the things that make that cause your stomach to bloat and you know you feel kind of lousy after taking it. So uh, I just think it's interesting that, you know, we have to uh, kick in extra to only have two or three ingredients. Isn't that fascinating? Mm -hmm. Um, And I love getting this like underground of explanation of how things are processed, like the why, like why would we add emulsifiers if if we don't need it as the consumer, Um, but it's to save cost, right? Because Mm -hmm. of, of the machines and how they run. But the effect that that's having on the body, and that's negative. And I think that's really the food industry as a whole. Um, so if, if for those of you listening, the major takeaway is start with a whole foods diet. And then as you do find supplements, because there's certainly, there's some great high quality protein powders out there. And for people that just have crazy, crazy lifestyles that, that need that on occasion, I get it. Like, I totally get it. Um, But it's really doing the research to understand that. So you talked about these emulsifiers that they don't even need to report, which I didn't know. Um, So I'm learning something here. So how how do we know which products to choose? Um, If they don't disclose them, then I guess are we always looking for companies that come out and say that, hey, we don't use these? Yeah, it's it's tough because you you can ask for you know people's um, a certificate of of, uh, of authenticity in their their labs and stuff like that, and you know we'll happily uh, you know put that out there. Um, but um, I I doubt that most supplement companies would. Right. Yeah. Well, I do know that you know I've tried to get some um, details on natural flavorings. Right. I don't know if folks know this, but a lot of the herbal teas will have what they call natural flavorings, and it could be um, beaver urine that they use, and they can call it natural because the beaver comes from nature, but they won't disclose it, right? So I've actually reached out to some of the tea companies and said, hey, what are you using for their natural flavorings? And they all say, it's proprietary, we can't disclose that, like it's their secret ingredient, right? Um, So I think that's a red flag too for, for those of you that... I want to go back to the emulsifiers and you mentioning um, it causing some digestive distress. Do you know why that is? Is it like feeding 
the bad bacteria in the gut causing bloat and gas? Is it um, an irritant to the lining? Do you know specifically? You know, I, I don't know the, the mechanism, but I know just in general, like when our body ingests something that is pretty much seen as foreign, you know, like <laughs> hundreds of years ago, no one was eating emulsifiers. When they see something as foreign, you know, it's pretty much going to create inflammation and try to uh, isolate and quarantine it. And the acute inflammation is kind of what causes the, the gastric distress. Yep, that makes sense. That makes sense. Awesome. Okay, so what's your favorite flavor? <laughs> oh my gosh, it kind of it kind of changes. I I started out I was a I was a chocolate sea salt man for a long time, and uh, and now I've kind of just been like deviating into peaches and creamville yeah um, we just came out with the vanilla and chocolate mct powders they're insane they're they're my two new favorites and also a matcha um flavored mct powder and that kind of stemmed from we went to japan earlier this year and fell in love with matcha and we were like oh my gosh we need to do mct plus some matcha tea so that's another uh, that's another favorite ah i'll go i'll go i'll go the chocolate flavor for <laughs> Awesome. Well, I'm going to give a plug for the peaches and cream. That's what I have in my cover today. And uh, I love it. So for people that are doing a ketogenic diet, when should they use the products versus their whole foods diet? When's the best time to use it? And to be honest, like you don't have to be doing a ketogenic diet to benefit from exogenous ketones or MCTs or collagen protein. Um, when I'm not doing a keto diet, I'm still taking exogenous ketones before, like before I settle down for a work session, that type of thing. Um, there's tons of studies that are showing that ketones are used preferentially by the brain and the yeah. heart, even in the presence of carbohydrates. And I know I just feel really clear when I have ketones uh, running, whether it's you know via nutritional keto ketosis or by supplementing with exogenous ketones on top, because I mean the two the two uh, um, sources they're bioidentical. Like your cells do not know the difference between a ketone that was produced um, by your body or that you drank with a smoothie. Um, so I I do it with or with uh, without carbs. But um, the best times I use it as uh, you know the mental the mental energy before work, and then also like across a, across a workout. So it's any time okay. that you, you kind of want a, a boost. Like that's what it does is it, is it raises your ketone levels for, you know, an hour to two hours. And the MCTs are a little bit slower. Um, they're still, they're still fast acting energy as far as fat goes, but they're a little bit slower and a little more satiating than the ketones. So that's something I use as a snack uh, or just kind of like my buddy, like when I'm traveling, you know, it's a, a source of very clean, healthy fats. Um, and then the collagen, uh, that's just 10 grams of protein. And the reason why we developed that is, you know, if you're taking a, a typical protein powder, it's very refined protein and it'll probably be 25 grams or, or so. And it, when you eat that much protein uh, at once, it's already very refined. Uh, it tends to lead to um, gluconeogenesis, which will raise your glucose levels. It'll actually convert protein into glucose within your body. It's, it's a little bit anti-ketogenic, so um, our keto collagen is 10 grams of uh, collagen protein, which is awesome for soft tissue recovery, and then there's 5 grams of MCT, so that uh, pairing it with the fat slows the um, uh, digestion and absorption, absorption of protein, um, so if you're, if you're doing keto and you're, you're exercising, I would totally recommend that. Awesome. I love it. Okay. We will make sure that all of the links to your product and more information and Dr. Gustin's blog um, are in the show notes. But how can people learn more about you guys and what you're doing for those listening? Absolutely. So um, like I said, we take a lot of pride in having this be a platform to spread you know, really solid health information. And so we're putting out two to three blog articles, two to three recipes that we a makeover in our test kitchen uh, every single week. Um, so you can find those on the website. And we're also assembling these big comprehensive guides on, on big topics, you know, when it's like intermittent fasting or the ketogenic diet or, you know, supplements, that type of thing. Um, we're putting together these, these really um, impressive guides I'm, I'm very proud of. And then we also have a, a Facebook group called the Perfect Keto Community. 
Um, it's all folks that are just starting out the perfect uh, the ketogenic diet, or you know, people that have been doing it for years, but just kind of want to be, um, you know, bouncing things off because no matter like where you're at in your health journey or it, your keto journey, um, you're definitely learning things and still making mistakes. So those are the two best places. I love it. Well, thank you so much for all the tips, Alex. We really appreciate. You coming on today's show, we'll make sure we get all the links out to everyone, and I'm sure we will stay in touch with you. Rock on. Thank you.